Hi, I'm Diane Gleason, and as part of the online Conservation Genomics for Threatened Species Management course, I'm presenting this module on eDNA case studies. I'm based at the University of Canberra and I run the EcoDNA Lab. So eDNA, as we know, it has enormous potential for helping us to target many things that we can use for threatened species management. Obviously, it's more cost effective, it's very sensitive. Um, for species monitoring and can be used for things like detecting rare species, those that are otherwise more difficult to monitor through their life stages being very difficult to detect, or they are an elusive or rare species that is often very hard to find um, through other traditional methods. Also for things like monitoring biodiversity recovery, we can use metabarcoding as a way of getting whole biodiversity inventories from locations, and we can therefore monitor changes in biodiversity using this approach. Also, in terms of assisting reintroduction programs, we can use eDNA to basically evaluate the success of those reintroduction programs through eDNA technologies, being able to detect your species of interest and then mitigating impacts of invasive species through either detecting an invasive species early in the environment, um, detecting perhaps how far it has spread in the environment, and also um, evaluating again um, invasive species control operations and whether these have been effective or not um, due to the sensitive nature of eDNA. So today I'm going to give you um, a case, a couple of case studies. One will be on reintroductions and the other on invasive. So here's our first case study, which this was um, work carried out on the northern corroboree frog, which is a really critically endangered species. It's found only in um, the ACT high country, like the Brindabella Ranges and some of the adjacent New South Wales ranges, like the Tindery Ranges. This is a tiny frog that um, is becoming more and more vulnerable due to habitat loss and um, impacts like the chytrid fungus. So as a consequence to these impacts and threats to the species, a captive population has been established at this Timpanbilla Nature Reserve in the ACT. And with um, this captive colony providing an insurance um, for those in the wild, but also enabling a reintroduction program back into local regions. So some of these have been re-released back into the Namaji National Park. The release usually involves eggs, um, most commonly, but can be juveniles. However, the success of these reintroductions can only ever be measured through, well, current traditional methods was through adult um, monitoring. And that was quite a long wait. So it takes about three years um, before you have mature males, which are the only ones that you can really monitor through a shout out response. And also a very restricted time in the sense of um, only going to be calling in the breeding season. So there's a really long gap between when um, animal, well, um, eggs or those juvenile stages have been released back into the environment before you can actually evaluate the success or not of your reintroduction program. So we developed a um, eDNA method because it showed really good promise to be able to monitor those post-release survival in that non-invasive manner. And um, we went out and after um, developing a, a specific assay for the Northern Crawberry Frog, we went and monitored um, some of the post-release sites. So here's an example of some of the um, ponds that we were looking at and um, time since the, um, their reintroduction. Um, this gives us a, a way of identifying potentially the timing of when things might not um, you know, work in terms of the um, species being able to continue to exist after being reintroduced um, and maybe give us an idea of maybe what some of those causes could be as to why they have um, failed to work. So these ponds, um, they were monitored, so three samples from each site, um, each pond, and this was looking for positive detections using eDNA. And you can see we started to detect around that sort of between day eight and day 15, and that's probably around at the time when um, eggs are hatching. And you can see that um, in 
two of the ponds, there were still positive detections up to now 78 days post-release, um, with pond B obviously being the most successful with all 100% all of um, samples recording the presence of this um, frog, or at that stage probably juveniles still. However, pond A showed initially there was um, some low level detection, possibly some hatched at that point, but then um, failed from there on. So this was quite successful in terms of giving, um, you know, a bit of an idea as to what might be happening um, with, this, with this species and, and um, in the reintroduction program and also shows that real sensitivity and being able to detect um, the early life stages of this species. So it has a really great, um, you know, um, potential for being implemented in reintroduction programs and not just um, in the case here of the corroboree frog. My second um, case study is on invasive species containment. Redfin perch um, are an invasive um, freshwater fish that was introduced into Australia in the 1860s. Um, this species is quite a popular sport fish, but it's also a really significant predator for other fish and invertebrates. It can also spread a epizootic um, necrotic disease or this EHN virus to native fish populations. So it sort of has um, kind of a double threat in that regard. They're considered a serious pest. They're listed as notifiable under um, biosecurity legislation. And the traditional methods for surveying the species is through fike netting, um, fike mesh, seine netting, and electrofishing. We developed a highly specific and sensitive eDNA assay that um, we showed performed just as well as traditional survey methods for this species and um, showed the applicability of using eDNA um, when needing to detect early stages of invasion and incursion of this um, invasive species. So the case study involved this um, southern pygmy perch, which is uh, a, a endemic species and it's a highly threatened species only found in three locations in New South Wales. This tiny nine centimeter um, perch was once at one stage so common throughout the Murray catchment that um, actually in a 1970s fishing book, they have recommended using it as live bait for trout. However, sadly, um, in the subsequent decades, this um, species has absolutely plummeted to only three small populations left. Now, one of the biggest threats to the species is redfin perch, and particularly at one of the last remaining populations that is found in the Blackney Creek um, area, which is a tributary from the Lachlan River. So, in order to prevent further incursion or encroachment of redfin perch onto the southern pygmy perch um, habitat, New South Wales DPI Fisheries, they conducted, they were conducting these intensive surveys to determine the invasion front as this redfin perch was now moving up into Blackney Creek and, um, and moving upstream. And that they wanted to do was find the invasion front and identify an optimal location for a physical barrier. EDNA there was used in this um, in this at this time, the same time, um, alongside of these traditional survey methods as a way of um, us seeing how well it performed, but also as another approach um, to seeing where we could determine the incursion front. So here we have the Lachlan River and the Blackney Creek moving up into Urumawalla Creek. And this is where the last remaining population of um, of the southern, southern pygmy perch was found. And we've got redfin perch moving in this upward direction. So electrofishing and seine netting and fike netting was used. And this um, indicates where the limit of redfin perch was detected using those traditional survey methods. But with um, eDNA survey, it was detected much um, further up and up into the Urumawalla Creek. Um, so you know, it was clear that uh, eDNA indicated that um, this incursion had moved further than would have been um, previously thought through uh, traditional survey methods. So as a consequence of that, a fish barrier was, um, was then constructed in Urumawalla Creek um, and positioned using that eDNA information. And 
subsequent surveys that have been carried out above that barrier have failed to detect um, the presence of redfin fish, uh, redfin perch. Um, we've also carried out metabarcoding studies to look at the, the broader biodiversity, and that has provided further information on community changes that have occurred upstream due to the presence of this invasive species. So overall, eDNA has shown that it can be really effective, super sensitive in both cases here of a reintroduction and also detecting a invasive species and containing it, and um, has really great promise for further um, applications for, um, for conservation of threatened species. Thank you. <laughs>